Jeff, your I believe your first book on animals was When Elephants Weep. That's right. And it was a fantastic book. And in the book, you say, there's a quote, it says, the notion that animals are wholly other than humans, despite our common ancestry, is more irrational than the notion that they are like us. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I was thinking primarily there of the continuity in our emotional lives, because that was so difficult to get across to scientists. Science, of course, mind you, Darwin, already in 1872, recognized this continuity and wrote a whole book about the expression of emotions in man and animal. So he was fascinated by this and by the similarity. And he once wrote in his notebook, well, it's, it's common sense if we have these physical continuity, why wouldn't we have the mental continuity as well? So if people had taken that seriously in 1872, we'd be a lot more advanced than we are now. But I think there's been a real sea change, I'd say in the last 10 or 15 years. and. When Elephants Weep was part of that, now there are many scientists, more competent scientists than me, writing about this um, constantly today. Um, there are three or four books just in the last few years about the emotional world of animals. I think it's being recognized today that we not only share continuity, but there are profound similarities in over the whole wide range of human emotions. So things that we might have thought of as uniquely human, such as compassion, for example, or a sense of aesthetics, or even the appreciation of a sunset, for example, we now recognize that many of these are shared. And we're probably gonna learn a great deal more as we progress. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that birds have a, a, a great sense of, I mean, I don't know if you've seen this, this parrot dancing that was on, the, on YouTube recently. I and mean, clearly they have a sense of rhythm, they have a sense for music. Uh, they must, parrots who have such bright colors and are able to see so well, must enjoy colors. And you have these various birds who like to put things together in a nice aesthetic arrangement. So I think that we're over the next 10 or 15 or even 20 years, this is going to expand exponentially. The topic. The topic of the similarity between humans and animals. And even, I'll go even further, I wouldn't be surprised if we learn that there are certain animals who have certain emotions that we don't have. That is, that they're capable of something that humans are not yet capable of. That wouldn't surprise me. For example, maybe elephants grieve more deeply than humans do. I do believe, by the way, to come back to our earlier question, that dogs feel love more purely than do humans. It's not contaminated with any kind of ambivalence. When a dog loves, they love purely. Excellent. G continuing on that point about how animals are like us and unlike us, it it leads me to think about animal experimentation, for example, because it is hypocritical inherently if we're going to test on them because they're so like us, yet we insist they're so different from us that That's they don't right. yeah. feel I mean, any pain or discomfort. Yeah, or I think that that idea is now, the, the way you've just expressed it, has really taken hold. And I think you'd, you'd, it would be a rare scientist that wouldn't agree that there is this inherent contradiction and that we've tried to have it in the past both ways. To say, well, they're totally unlike us, they're incapable of the profundities we're capable of, therefore we can experiment on them and torture them and harm them in all these different ways. On the other hand, the reason we're doing this is to learn about ourselves. So you can't have both. If they're like us, then we shouldn't be doing this. If they're not like us, then we're not going to learn anything. But so. yet, it still continues. It continues, unfortunately. I noticed just a few days ago in the Wall Street Journal, there was a front page article about the suffering of mice and rats, which is fascinating to me that a journal like the Wall Street Journal would talk about this in a serious fashion. I mean, a number of scientists are recognizing now, for example, that rats and mice uh, can feel compassion and have, in fact, feelings for cage mates. They will not eat food if eating the food entails a shock to another rat. So they recognize that, they make that kind of moral choice, which nobody would have believed they were capable of. In fact, the research was done a long time ago, but it's only now people are beginning to recognize, yes, this is really true. Rats and mice are perfectly capable of altruism. 
something we thought was unique to humans. I recently um, heard or read that mice and rats were more largely used maybe in the 40s, 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s for experimentation because people did not equate pets, the same qualities. Well, that's right. In fact, this them. article in, in the Wall Street Journal pointed out that people have a very negative view of rats and mice, and that is changing. I mean, I've lived with pet rats, and they're really quite wonderful. They're very um, affectionate, they're intelligent, they're clean, uh, they're loyal. We had a rat, uh, my, my son, my 12-year-old son, Ilan, would carry his three rats in his sleeve almost all day. He would take them to school. He, he would hang with them all day. And one day, one of them, we left her by mistake at a gas station. They were wandering around, and we didn't realize it. Three days later, we went back, and she was waiting inside the bush. And when my son called, she came rushing out and jumped into his sleeve. Home! <laughs> oh, my gosh. I also had uh, two rats uh -huh. many years ago, and they were loving. They got along with my cats. My Absolutely. cats liked the rats. Yes. Uh, yeah, very affectionate. They yeah, they, they're, they're actually wonderful animals. So our whole view about um, rodents is changing.